So the irony mm -hmm. of Eddie playing Rudy, and he never called him. Eddie, unfortunately, wouldn't piss on Rudy Ray Moore when he was alive. Rudy had three real desires in life. Um, one was to be on network television. Uh, he, he, he saw Red Fox on and everybody, and he wanted to be on network television. So um, when I directed The Legend of Dolomite, the documentary, um, my partner in that film, uh, Makita Smith from Jasmine, we put our, um, Dolomite on Arsenio Hall. That made Rudy's life. Mm -hmm. The second thing was at B Broadway. He had, in uh, Dolomite is my name, they have a joke in there about him saying he's on Broadway. And he said, yeah, I'm standing on the corner of Broadway. Well, when I directed that film, what I did was um, I put on a concert here at the Ivar Theater and we did Dolomite way off Broadway. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I can't put you on Broadway, but you're going to be way off Broadway. And he had a kick out of that because he didn't want me to do the documentary because he didn't think nobody cared about him, you know, um, like that. And the third thing, and this is the irony. I mean, listen, the irony of this. The one thing Rudy Ray Moore wanted more than anything in the world, the only of the three things that were left, was for Eddie Murphy to put him in one of his movies. Mm. He used to say all the time, Cord, why, what does Eddie got against me? Why don't he like me? Why he How old know? was he around that time? Who, Eddie? No, uh, Rudy. Rudy. Like, I don't know. He's grown. I mean, he's. This is like, like when he was older, he was just kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah. Kind Rudy of didn't get sick until the last year and a half or two years of his life. Wow. Yeah, he wasn't sick. But prior to that, he had diabetes, but yeah. he was a healthy man. He was he was doing well, you know. Uh, his feet would swell up and stuff from the diabetes, but he wasn't sickly like he got and start shriveling up. And, yeah. and then, um, you know, someone took him to Cleveland and that was a whole other thing. And I had lost access because as long as he was around me, he was taking his medications, he was right. doing all this stuff, you know. So, um, so the irony, Mm -hmm. of Eddie playing Rudy and he never called him. Eddie unfortunately wouldn't piss on Rudy Ray Moore when he was alive. But, you think he, so I mean. Well they all looked down on him. They yeah. all looked down on Rudy because he was doing that country ghetto humor. You know the, what the type of comedy that he did sort of stigmatized him. You know, and that stayed with him over the years. And then all of the new comedians came up, and they was doing the same thing, but they was doing it in a hipper fashion. Right. You know, like Richard Pryor kind of bro broke so the, the mold. Thing, the Pryor. Thing was, so Eddie just, I'm just trying to catch your guy's perspective. He just felt that Eddie should have called, or was it like a, a situation specifically that showed Eddie wasn't like, supporting him, or was it just that fact he just never reached out? He never reached out. Yeah. You know, yeah, he, 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 I'm telling you, that was the one thing that Rudy Ray Moore wanted mm -hmm. more than anything in the world was for Eddie Murphy, because Eddie was the biggest movie star, the biggest comic, you know. What do you like, think that would have looked, what do you think that would have been? It would have been wonderful. It would have been, I mean, see, but that gets into Was it a, a movie? Whole, was it like just an acknowledgement? Was it just. What, that Rudy wanted? Yeah, like from Eddie. What Rudy do you think? wanted to be in an Eddie movie. He was, what was it, Distinguished Gentleman and Harlem Nights? He uh -huh. had everybody. In it. Okay. And he dissed Rudy. See, Rudy felt he took it personal. You know, that hurt him bad. You know, and okay. and, and so, you know, but it and again it's not just Eddie, it's it's all it's how African American people treat each other in Hollywood. I mean, it, you know, Robert Zemeckis, Steven Spielberg, uh, George Lucas, all of them, everybody that they came up with, went to school with, all their friends, cousins, they're all in the business, they're all doing well. You know, it's like when black people, we, we don't, we're not trying to understand the power of the industry. And I think about when you just mentioned the irony 
of like Eddie portraying him. And this is Eddie's comeback too. This is Eddie's comeback. That's the Eddie's career is on the, on the, was on the downhole. And what brings him back? Rudy Ray Moore, the guy that he didn't give any acknowledgement to when Rudy's career was right. on. What do you think Rudy would, his reaction would be? Oh, Rudy would, Rudy would, Rudy would say, you know, the quarter, can you believe this much? Oh, no, Rudy, I, I sat at home and listened to Rudy actually okay. talking since this whole okay. movie. Okay. You know, since I first heard the movie was being made, Rudy has spoke to me several times. Okay. You know? It's like, he's loving it. He's loving it. Don't get me wrong, Eddie Murphy. Fucking Rudy Ray Moore is ecstatic that you're doing his life. I'm ecstatic because people are hearing his name and knowing about Rudy Ray Moore's contribution. But I cannot go without saying that Rudy's pissed that you never called him when he was alive. Mm. Hands down. That's just the truth.